This setup can be used to explore the photoelectric effect. It's sometimes called a photocell. The rheostat allows us to change the voltage across the two metal plates. And the micrometer can measure very sensitive currents. Okay, we can use a lamp to direct light at one of the metal surfaces, for example, this one here, and it starts to emit electrons. So the electrons will come out with a range of kinetic energies. So with the maximum kinetic energy being given by the energy of the photons minus the work function, the minimum energy needed to escape the metal. So you can imagine that this one here comes out with Ke max, while the others will come out with a slow velocity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the voltage and measure the current. When I do that, I get a graph like this. Okay, this graph shows the current in the circuit against the potential difference. When it's connected, so it's positive on this plate, the electrons are accelerated towards the plate. They're attracted. So you can see you get a constant current here. The reason for this is because the intensity, no matter how high the voltage is, the size of the current is determined by the number of electrons that are flowing across, and that is determined by the intensity of the photon stream. So you get a constant current there. But when you connect it the other way around, so it's connected like this, and it's shown on this side of the graph. As you can see, as you make the voltage higher and higher in the negative direction, the current starts to decrease. That's because some of the electrons, especially the slower ones, are being repelled and prevented from reaching the, the, neg the negative end. So they're being they'll go, go only so far and they'll turn around and that, therefore they won't add to the current. So eventually if you increase the voltage you get to some a special point called the stopping voltage. And the stopping voltage is when even the fastest electrons, even the ones with the Ke max that came from the surface of the metal, even they don't have enough energy to get to the negative plate and uh, create a current. So if these can't come, they uh, get, get to the negative plate, then none of the other electrons will. So the current drops to zero. So vo stopping voltage is what we measure. And we can write an equation for it. It's just kind of the opposite of the electron gun equation. The Ke max is going to be, which is half m max squared, can also be written as the work done to stop the electron, which is the charge times the stopping voltage, Vs. In this case, of course, charge is E. What happens if you use a higher intensity light? So here the stopping voltage would still be the same. The, the reason for this is if you think about the photon, elect, uh, the energy of the photons hasn't changed. We've just used a high intensity, which means more photons per unit time. But the energy of the each photon, the frequency is still the same. And the work function hasn't changed. So Ke max is still the same. So therefore stopping voltage is still the same. So you still have that. But what you have is you'll have more electrons being released because there are more photons and there's one-to-one -one interaction uh, with the photons and the electrons. So we'll get more electrons being released, which will result in a higher current being produced. What happens if you use a higher frequency of light? So each photon is shorter wavelength and that means they have more energy. So each photon has a higher energy. The work function hasn't changed because we're still using the same metal. So Ke max will be larger. So therefore the stopping voltage will be larger. So we'll have a larger stopping voltage over here. But the intensity should be the same because the number of photons per unit time is still the same. So the number of electrons emitted per unit time should still be the same. Even though they're coming out faster, the number of electrons per unit time will be the same. So should look a bit like this. Okay, if we change the frequency of that light and you plot that on the x-axis and you measure the corresponding stopping voltage for each of those frequencies, you can multiply the free, uh, stopping voltage by the charge, in other words, electron charge here, to get Ke max, and you plot that on the y-axis. This should give us a straight line like this the positive uh, gradient and if you extrapolate backwards you should get a negative intercept like so. So the negative intercept here should be Planck's, I'm sorry, the work function. The gradient should be Planck's constant 
Alternatively, you might want to plot the stopping voltage on the y-axis and the frequency on the uh, x-axis, in which case you okay, get something very similar. And here you have the gradient is equal to uh, Planck's constant over the charge of the electron, and you've got an intercept of work function over charge. You can also determine the x-intercept here. In this case, the x-intercept, if you make uh, Ke max equal to zero, okay, Hf equals um, phi, if you rearrange that, and you get F is equal to the work function over Planck's constant. So this will equal the work function over Planck's constant. And in this case, if we make stopping voltage zero, you'll get H, so we'll get the same thing really. You get um, Planck's constant over H, sorry, work function over H.